Y ahora de regreso aquí en el último segmento de Auto 60, we're switching back to English again because uh, one of my, uh, we're going to share one of my favorite segments of the show when we talk to the great colleagues that we meet along the road and uh, we just uh, met uh, with Scott Reese from uh, SheBuysCars.com. How are you? Good morning. How are you, Javier? Excellent. Thank you. So we were a uh, guest of uh, the diversity group of uh, General Motors uh, this past week uh, in Detroit for the auto show and uh, it was a great uh, great experience to see how uh, General Motors is uh, doing more and more initiatives to incorporate more people into what, uh, what to share what they do, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah, so... Okay. Uh, tell me about it. I've been looking at your site, SheBuysCars.com, and uh, tell me a little bit about the site first, please. So we launched the site about a year ago um, because there was not information in the marketplace for women. Um, women feel intimidated by the car purchase experience. They don't feel confident walking into a, a car dealership. Um, and women view cars differently. Even the Uh, mainstream consumer media, consumer reports, and, and places like that uh, don't write about cars the way women look at cars. Women are more concerned with the passenger space and uh, the comfort of the people in the back seat, not just the driver. Um, our, and so our focus is really more um, what's inside the car, not so much what's under the hood. Yeah, and um, it's it's kind of uh, interesting to see that there's not much information of uh, or specific sites for women because uh, from what I understand, women make most of the decisions of the, of the car buying process, right? 85% of all car purchase decisions are made by or influenced by women. And as some people in the industry say, the uh, women have 100% of the veto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I'm not married, so uh, but I can understand from my friends and family that uh, that that's that's the situation there. I mean, you might want something, but then uh, you have to have it out authorized by by the boss, basically. <laughs> it's a big purchase. It's a very important purchase. Most couples make the decision about all of their cars together um, because it's not just the car; it's the budget. It's what you're going to do with your money. Are you going to spend it all in a car, or you can take a vacation, buy a house, uh, invest in college education for your kids? So, you know, it's a, it's a very important financial decision, um, and it's a decision that you have to live with for a while, at least three or four years, um, or, it's, it's a, or it's a really good financial decision. So um, it's one that people don't take lightly, and women more and more earning their own incomes and, and making other financial decisions for themselves, um, this is one that they're that they have to do, they have to make. And so we're there to give them the information, uh, give them the opinions of other women who have bought these cars. Um, and we tell it we tell it like it is, we're your friends. Um, and that's our that's our position. We're we're telling you what your best friend would tell you about a car. Yeah, and also besides just like uh, general tips you have like uh, information about financing and insurance and all those kind of things, right? Exactly, exactly. We'll help you uh, with information, mostly stories um, from people who've been there and advice from experts on how to negotiate, how to find a mechanic, uh, how to find the perfect car, um, what to do if the dealer, if you find the dealer experience insulting. Um, we're there to answer questions and we're there to tell the stories that people can identify with uh, so that they feel more empowered. Yeah, especially the dealer experience. A dealership experience, I think, is pretty frightening for a lot of people. Not only women, but men also who like don't know, are not very good with finances and numbers and all that. So I think that's a that's a great thing. And something that I I will I will say that has to change a lot in the in, in the new era now with the internet and all this information flowing freely. I think uh, maybe com big companies uh, like General Motors that they have a big change going on uh, right there with the new CEO Mary Barra might, might help to change that atmosphere, right? I mean, the cars are great already. I mean, like, they're doing really great things, but maybe they can change something at the dealership level, which uh, I don't think is going to be that easy. I don't think it's going to be that easy because that's a much larger um, and not connected network of Um, companies. So the, the dealers, you know, each dealer is usually independently owned or part of a small group, um, but there are dealer associations and General Motors and, and Ford and every other automaker 
work very closely with the dealers to help them sell cars. Uh, so they are invested in the process. And the changes that we've seen in, in General Motors, and we can talk about that, but it, it's interesting that um, the changes that we're seeing as consumers um, we're ju are just coming to light to us right now, but these are things that have been in the works for a while, um, and they are very much targeting their dealer network to institute those same changes there as well. Um, and in fact, some of the brands are a little more ahead of the game. Chevrolet is one that has been already invested in some dealer training and putting in programs and uh, that uh, will um, that will make it um, easier, more transparent, less confusing for a buyer to come in and buy a car. Um, and that's something that we're seeing. We're hearing from women that Chevrolet is a great place to buy a car. They have a great experience there, um, and that and I think. General Motors recognizes that that is key to selling the car. Building a great car is one thing, but you have to get people into the showroom and into those cars and, and signing on the dotted line. Yeah. Um, and now that we, I, I want, once they get there, I mean, like uh, a, a really uh, a, a small uh, interaction with uh, with the wrong person can ruin everything, which is a shame because, I mean, like uh, the companies make the great cars, they they build these great facilities, like the new dealership from Chevrolet. You're right. I mean, I have one nearby by my house, and it's beautiful. But maybe if you don't have that right connection for one second, maybe everything can be ruined, right? That's exactly right. And in fact, we've had several women um, writing about their experience and walking out of dealers because they go in with their husband and the husband says, talk to her, don't talk to me. And um, then and the salesman talks to the man. <laughs> yeah, they ignore, ignore the woman completely, right? I'm the client. I'm the customer here. You have to talk to me. And the, and the salesman often, they just are so trained to talk to the man, that the man is the one who's going to sign the deal. All of the automotive media, almost all of it, is targeted to men. Um, so that's one reason we're here, because we want to change not only how empower our audience of women, but also change how the uh, dealers and the automakers approach women, how they talk to us and um, how they view us. That's great. So, Scotty, uh, very briefly, because we unfortunately we're running out of time in this uh, final segment of the show. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that you have got uh, a lot of feedback from uh, your readership about the appointment of Mary Barra, right? Yes, uh, that was an announcement that had our whole world just cheering um, because it, it, it what Mary Barra's appointment signals are several things. One is that. The culture changes that went into place in General Motors um, five years ago took hold. Uh, five years ago, they brought in a new CEO. They fired all the the old boys club who had been running the place, um, and they they put down new standards and new expectations. And they were going to promote women. They were going to promote diversity. They were going to promote people from you know all walks of life. Train them put the best and brightest people in jobs, not the, you know, old boys. Um, and so what this says is that works. Yeah. It works because they're building great cars, their sales are up, their stock price is up, they pay back the government, they did everything that they set out to do using those strategies of diversity. Excellent. And so Mary Barnes appointment to the CEO You know, on a, on a national level, she broke the glass ceiling. She's the first woman to run an a, a auto company. But what that really says is all the things that they set out to do, they did. And she's proof of it. Yeah. Um, and it's a great message to the consumer that this is a car company who gets me. I'm, I'm a minority. I'm a Hispanic. I'm a woman. I'm Asian. I'm African American. And there's a woman in this company, and 40% of the boardroom, yeah. by the way, 40% of the directors of the company are minorities. So yeah. Not. Okay, Scotty, I'm sorry, really sorry. It's a very interesting yeah. conversation, and I said, like, uh, we can call, uh, talk again uh, very soon. So, SheBuysCars.com, and uh, so we will keep uh, talking to you, okay? Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time. Bye. Bueno, y ese fue el show de esta semana. Los esperamos en la siguiente edición de Auto 060 aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Yo soy Javier Mota, y vamos a poner, como siempre, toda la información del show en nuestras páginas de social media para que nos sigan. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.